Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's ACE Web webinar. ACE Web, how about ACE Wear webinar on coding tips and techniques. For the next 50 minutes or so, Chuck's going to discuss some guidelines for successful coding. If you have questions or comments during the session, just type those in the chat box. Matthew and I are monitoring those questions, and I can get to Chuck as needed. The session's being recorded, and we'll have that posted to our website by the end of the week, so you can return to it on demand or share with colleagues as needed. So, Chuck, I'm going to turn things over to you. You're muted. And now we're live. Thank you, Sharon. There you go. Uh, there we go. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up. We're going to talk about coding. And again, uh, for those of you real time, this is middle of February. We just passed Valentine's Day. And Cheryl has a lovely pink theme for us for our uh, session. So lots of uh, parts of – there are lots of parts to coding. And so um, we're going to kind of go through them all here. Uh, do want to have questions. So as we go through and you say, well, I have wondered how to do or what do I, how do I kind of things, do, do jot those in the text box and get them to Sharon and Matthew. And if it's a private, if it's one unique to you, they'll answer. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll be able to discuss it as a group. So what are we about here? Well, we happen to have a database here with Student Manager, and it has jobs uh, to help you organize data. It helps you store the data and retrieve the data. And in order to do that, we need to have some way to capture the data. Well, we use codes to do that in a lot of cases and what kind of things they do for us uh, include the following kind of items the which and the where and the what um and, and you know who are our best customers <clears throat> well those are all the kind of things that uh, properly coding your system should allow you to do uh, so the question is well what is it that you need to code what to code and kind of the general rule on that is at least in my thinking is code as much as you need. However, if you don't have reason for a code, don't code it. And again, it's kind of like the issue of uh, just because there was a box on a form that you picked up out of the file that was 20 years old, unless it's something that you're currently needing or using, uh, take that off your uh, code list. And, and again, that's even uh, a, a good, it's kind of to do a, I don't have a slide for this, but to do a uh, audit of your codes. You know, what codes are you using now? And we'll talk about how to test that um, in your system here. But again, that to reevaluate codes because again, codes exist for a purpose. And if you really don't have the purpose anymore to capture a code, make the code go away, make it inactive, and we're going to talk about how you're going to do that. So coding rules. <clears throat> In Manager, uh, when w w the fields we talk about codes are primarily validated fields. That is, you have the little drop down next to them or list, interest code, tracking code, coordinator name, department account. Um, for again, most of the codes, you can select a value from a drop down list. For others, uh, you type in a value and it's, the validation is tested as you leave that field, like zip code lookup, firm lookup. Uh, you generally can have an unlimited number of code definitions in your list. Um, and again, uh, the you're limited by your needs. Uh, we go back to that previous discussion, though, you really should only be using codes that are relevant to the programming and the kind of marketing and the research and the data collection needs you have right now or could anticipate having. <clears throat> codes are universal. In Student Manager application, when you create a code, that code is, if, uh, if it's active, and, and um, uh, an active code, everybody in the system will be able to see that code. So we do not have private codes available. 
Now, having said that, with one exception in that you can set up interest codes. And Sharon, remember me to, to talk about this because this is interesting, especially for larger programs. Uh, it, it, there is a way to privatize a group of interest codes. <clears throat> Most codes can be deactivated, and we'll talk about that. Some codes can be hidden from ACEWEB, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, but the idea of being able to allow use in ACEWEB of a subset of certain codes. Student manager codes. Well, code examples from the name screen are the firm, the zip code, the country, uh, source code, occupation code, organization, uh, gender, fee category, interest codes. Those are all examples of codes. Now, a code by any other name. One of the things to note, we use the term code in this uh, webinar primarily for the dropdowns, but technically uh, data fields that don't have a dropdown, i.e. suffix, the title of the individual, uh, a county you might record, certain data fields that are just open entry text fields are all technically code fields that you can run a report on it's just that they don't have that validated list where you can define a specific value to put in a particular data field. <clears throat> Enabling codes. Uh, you want to use a code and you don't see it on the screen. Uh, codes must be enabled in preferences for your user profile. <clears throat> and if you've been into the preferences area in Student Manager System Preferences, uh, under the name, course, register area, you're going to see data fields displayed with checkboxes next to them. And again, if you have not gone in and looked at your preferences at your instance of student manager, you should do that from time to time to make sure that you aren't having a field that is disabled. And you say, well, wait a minute, uh, we've been asked to track disability and I've been putting it in, a, in the comments field. Well, golly, there is a field called disability that you just need to enable <clears throat> and turn on in order for you to use it. Enabling codes. To enable a code, you simply check the box next to the code. Uh, and again, some codes might have additional options. So like under the pager phone, uh, there is actually an option that you can remove the, for, the format, I'll spit it out, you know, the 999-999 thing, you can remove the format on the pager phone data field and actually use it for a code. You can use it for any other value that you could put in a character field that is, what, 20 characters long. <clears throat> Oh, and let's go back to that, uh, go back to that. And you can change the label of some of these. Again, a lot of these fields on the uh, on your data screens, um, day phone, you can change the label on your phone numbers. Uh, if you say disability, if that's not a field that you're required to collect or you don't need to collect, you can label that field as alumni status or as pet name or whatever it is you might want to store um, about that particular individual. Again, giving you more flexibility to uh, track data for your, for your participants and your programs. Adding and editing codes. <clears throat> there are, uh, in most code areas in your student manager, there are default code values. Um, now again, uh, most of you probably have never taken out those old ACEWARE codes. Uh, so again, do note, you can add your own codes, edit existing ones, or delete the ones you don't use. And we'll certainly uh, talk about ways of doing that. How do you edit codes? You go to Module Codes or click the Add Edit Codes on the Quick Launch, and it takes you to the Universal Code Editor. Now, once that universal code editor appears, you have a drop down at the top where you can highlight the code area that you might want to edit. <clears throat> and then once you pick it, you now can go in and you'll have basically the toolbar, add, save, find, delete uh, on, your, on your different codes. 
Uh, you can also add a code when you're in a in in a record name course register wherever there is a plus, and this assumes that you have the permissions value. Uh, click that plus button, and it'll pop up a code editor where you can create or a basically add a new code field where you could go in and create a new code on the fly. Hit the OK button and go back and hit the drop down, and it would be in your drop down. Active, inactive codes. We are we are ripping right through this, guys. So better ask some questions, or Sharon's going to, uh, you know, cut my pay because I only gonna we'll, we'll only run here for about 40 minutes. So um, active codes. Active codes are ones that will pop up in the drop down list and be assigned to records. So what about this active, inactive codes? Active, inactive codes don't show up and cannot be assigned to new records. Now, the note is when you make a code inactive, the code still exists. All data that all records that have the old code, whether it's an interest code, a department code, or whatever, those records will still be there so they can be viewable, reportable. <clears throat> so, again, so the, in the drop down for organization code, if, there, if we used to have a code called AG, and we've de deactivated, it's not going to show up in the list. But if we were to look at a record for John Deere Tractor Company or um, AgriScience uh, Consulting, the code that would have been assigned to it is still, uh, still in the data record. Before you edit codes, okay, editing codes, it's not tricky, but there are rules that apply to that. So the basic one is if you edit a code, it will change the code value of any past registrations, names, courses that had the old code. So again, whenever you edit an existing code, it will warn you, are you sure you wanna do this? Because this will make, if I used to call snow cold hard stuff and now I wanna call snow of uh, X climate warming, whatever, you, you come up with the new name, all of those old code values that had the old name before you edited will be changed to the new value. <clears throat> so again, uh, if you want a new code and you say, well, we no longer use buggy whip and we're now going to use electric car charging station, uh, and you say, well, but you know, it'd be maybe nice to know who we did assign Buggy Whip to back then. Then what you should do is to deactivate the old Buggy Whip code and then create a new code for electric car charging station to be used going forward. And again, that preserves the old code, but allows you to not have Buggy Whip pop up in the list uh, when you're adding adding new records. User defined codes. Um, again, in the name course uh, register instructor, you have that additional info area of codes. Uh, so again, you can um, edit those codes from the preferences screen. You also can edit those codes from the name UDF, course UDF, reg UDFs area. Uh, and again, in some cases, you have a validate option. Uh, in, in the regular codes, this is from the preferences area where you can choose to validate like reg code or validate status. Um, and the question is, why would you not want something to validate? Well, if you had um, a, for instance, a registration code, this would be on the, your green registration screen, and you were using this as the, a license number. You wanted to track a license number for uh, registrants in a XYZ course. Obviously, you wouldn't need or want to create a unique valid code for every individual who would come in through the world personal license number. So you would want to leave that unvalidated so that they could uh, you could type in any value and it wouldn't go through the, do you want to say this as a valid code, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, <clears throat> the idea of an ID number that would be unique to the person, a unique name assigned to that record, or some short comment field that is not a validated, not something you want to validate. So, Sharon, Matthew, any questions at all? We doing good? You're doing good. Everybody's hanging in there. Raise your hands, everybody, so I know you're Nobody awake. Left yet. You guys well, awake? Raise hands. Half. Raise hands. There, yeah. there we go. Okay, they're with you. There we go. There we go. Okay, user-defined uh, codes. Again, going back to the user-defined additional info area. Uh, you can turn the character and numeric type user-defined fields into drop-down code lists. To do that, you at, you go to the edit mode on the um, on that screen and preface the name of the code with a plus sign. And then once you go to the record, then you're going to see a drop down and a add new value uh, to that particular code list. Um, and of course, there is also the ability to create unlimited UDF code lists. So I'm gonna ask a question, Sharon, and I guess I can watch here. Raise your hand if you have ever done a validated user-defined field. Raise your hand if you have ever done a validated. I want to see. And the answer is, golly, I don't see a lot of hands. I'm gonna let me let's. There's look. a couple hands there. There's a couple there, but uh, not a lot. Let's kind of run into uh, that case. So I'm on a name record, and let's say on my additional info. I wanted to validate the high school because I work with a, a local area and there's a limited number, you know, 40, 50 high schools that would be in my general area. And I'd like to have that in a drop down list. <clears throat> so what I need to do is go to preferences on names, edit preferences, names, go to the name UDFs area, and then I'm going to add a plus in front of that field. Now, whoops. Now this happens to be a 20 character field. And I say, well, I ought to move that to a field that is a longer field. Character field three has more, more space. I want to copy that. Here we go. All right. And of course, you would want to be careful doing that on your own data. Obviously, you want to make sure you're not having existing data stored in there, but this is my demo data. So I've done that, and I save this. Now I'm going to go to my name record and go to additional info, and there is my drop down. Well, I just made that, so it's virgin, brand new, so I need to start adding values. And my high school is Pawnee City, Pawnee City High School. And so now I have a value for Pawnee City High School. And then uh, if I registered somebody else from another high school, I could add more values. But that's how you can turn um, a character field into a uh, validated field. Now, the same thing applies to numeric fields. For instance, if you want to know the number of children, uh, if you need to track how many kids uh, somebody has or how many boyfriends or girlfriends or how many dogs or cats or cars, you want to, you want to track that, you could put a, um, I'm not sure if you, why you'd validate that, but anyway, um, you could put a plus in here. Actually, the other reason for using validated fields in numeric values is that you can actually change a numeric value of a one or a two into a yes or a no. <clears throat> so if you had a whole bunch of yes, no type questions, are you a senior citizen? Are you a veteran? And you're running out of logical fields, that's just a good example. We're, we're doing good time-wise. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to preferences, going to go to names, going to go to UDS, and I'm going to make field number two uh, veteran status plus veteran, B E T E R A N, question mark. Okay, okay. So 
Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to have a check and go to addition EDS and let's make our values and one is going to be yes and we're going to go and add another one zero is going to be no so now and again if you'll note there the default value on that logic or on numeric fields is zero so by default you'd want to make if you're going to use the number field for a, a, a yes no value or there's a default value for uh, like if you want to say resident non-resident and obviously most of your students are going to be resident you would make the zero value of a number to say resident and the non-zero value whatever it might be to say <clears throat> um, whatever the other is so that's how you can use uh, a numeric uh, validation to actually store additional data kind of a little um, a little trick in terms of being able to do coding and utilize uh, some numeric fields for some other other purposes now again just a note to report on that you would need to know what number is assigned to the the yes or the no or the resident or the non-resident you'd be searching for uh, numeric field number two equal to zero or equal to one for the no and the yes values on that so all right well that was a little sidebar there for y'all uh, code relationships uh, there are some codes that share the same code list. For instance, subject codes and, and um, interest codes, uh, those are the same between names and courses. Uh, on the name, source code, and the register tracking codes, they use the same source code um, code identification list. <clears throat> and again, some of them have special behavior. Uh, entering a course subject code automatically logs the interest code to the name and again the registration tracking code if the name has a source code by default that gets dropped into the registration uh, tracking code code reporting and this is an area that I think <clears throat> people don't take advantage of is that if you want a quick way to look at codes uh, like what codes are in your system go to the universal code editor, pick the area you wanna look at, find the code you want, and then at the bottom, you're gonna see the show name draw or show registration draw, show course list, <clears throat> click the button, and it would generate a list for you of how many records have that code on it. <clears throat> so for the course a category, if I said, well, how many courses have I assigned the category code certificate to? So you click on it and bada boom, you get the list of those courses. Uh, codes that have registration data would have a registration draw link. And you can see which names, uh, which registrations have that particular value. Um, and this is, we talk about cleaning up your codes. If you, if you, have a database and it's been around a while and, and it probably had a bunch of Chuck's old codes back from the demo days. Uh, if you wanna go through and look, by the way, <clears throat> it does have a update date stamp on the code area, although honestly that's been fairly recent in the past four to five years. So if your database has been around longer than that, you may not have any date here to reference. But basically, look up a code, you say, hmm, is anybody in that code? Well, then you click on the name draw, and it says, er, no names generated from this code. And so you say, well, we really don't offer early childhood education courses, so delete the sucker. Again, you can just delete, <clears throat> delete that uh, particular code, and it's just not going to be around anymore. However, again, let's go back to that. If this was a code that actually did have some students in it, and you said, <clears throat> but we no longer offer courses with early childhood ed, uh, what you really ought to do is make this an inactive code by unchecking the active box 
<clears throat> and then um, it wouldn't show up in the drop down or in the pick list, but you would keep a record of that for for history here. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, if you'll note down here, there is on the interest code screen, there is a scope by. Remember that, and we'll talk about that in that example of the special view of interest codes. So if this is, you, we'll keep you at the edge of your seats here, and there is a prize, no, we don't give a prizes at the end, sorry. Code reporting, there is actually under reports, codes, there is a set of different reports that will just give you a quick and dirty list of how many codes there are in that area <clears throat> and how many of them are active. Now, obviously you can do the same thing by going to, uh, whether I can get to that, uh, the, going to the, uh, <clears throat> the code that you're interested in, hitting the find button in the edit for individual codes, and it would give you uh, it would give you a listing of the codes. It just wouldn't be a printable copy. Course report or code reporting statistics. <clears throat> we do have a couple of statistical areas uh, that give you the ability to do course data, name data, tracking code data uh, on your on your codes. Basically, the data that you're tracking on the individual. Um, for instance, in name statistics, uh, it gives you a drop down at the top to say, pick the code you want to run the stat on. <clears throat> you then run your query of whatever you want to run, course number, all names in some cases, uh, begin date is between two dates, registration, add date, whatever the query is you want. Some of them will ask about how you want to report finance, whether amount due, amount paid, or skip the money altogether. And it'll give you a report. So again, it'll give you the area that has the code, the number of names in it, the number of registrations, and the dollar amount. Now in this case, we must have answered no to the dollars because it didn't generate any of the revenue uh, references on here. Course statistics, similar kind of setup. You get to pick a drop down based on the category of code. Um, I, I do want to make a plug for statistics, though. We do have some unique kind of options in the drop down that really aren't codes, but that are they're kind of global elements. For instance, the year the course was offered, uh, or uh, the the enrollment cluster, which is if you think about. Uh, you've got your minimum number of enrollments, you've got your course maximum number of enrollments, and then you've got the ones over. So the clusters would be how many courses were run under the minimum, how many were run at the minimum to the maximum, and how many were actually run in an over-enrolled capacity. Uh, so it's some kind of unique characteristics. This is a course category report for course statistics. Um, and then tracking code reporting, which is certainly this is where you earn your money from doing coding of the tracking code in that it will let you generate uh, how the return on investment is based on the different tracking codes. So if you look, say, well, what's the return on investment for what I spent? Well, no code. Well, that referred by friends, so I want to find a bunch of people who have friends. Uh, you know, the idea of no code generated uh, from the web. But if you look at the other ones, company website, we got a $10 return on every dollar we spent to promote that. ACHE Journal 7.4. Here's one, UPSIA mailing only got $2 for every dollar we spent. Well, that's that wasn't a real whoopee uh, return. Generally, you're looking for a five to one is what kind of the industry says you ought to find for your investment return. Uh, and then the tracking code report on a course by course basis, which is under the tracking code, which would show you for any given course, which different promotions generated the enrollments in that course. So you can actually drill down into 
uh, a, a tree by tree level rather than looking at the whole forest of uh, codes that you might have. Like these kind of reports, we've got a webinar in the webinar archive under the reporting area. Numbers Matter, where, which we will have a whole hour and you can listen to me expound on the wonders of the uh, statistical reporting. Cleaning up codes. All right, so as we said, codes, coding in a database is like growing a garden. Uh, it is not just throwing the seeds in the ground in the spring and drinking pina coladas until August when you start to harvest them. You really do need to continually maintain cleanup and uh, work with your codes to keep them from getting overgrown and underweed or dying from lack of uh, lack of care. So again, under the cleanup area, uh, some of the main ones are the idea of, of the code area, uh, be able to change locations, add, edit firms, cleaning up name interest codes. So again, code cleanup. <clears throat> the idea here is that uh, you pick an area that you have, course category. This is maybe not one of the common ones. Some like interest codes or organizational codes or source codes might be the more typical ones you get into. But the point is, within this area, you can highlight multiple codes and then combine all of the codes that you identify into one value. Uh, you can highlight codes and turn them all active or inactive. Uh, and basically do some mass updates of your codes area. Um, and I'm going to actually, let's get into a live one here. So uh, we're gonna go into codes cleanup, data cleanup, code areas, and I wanna do interest codes. And I'm looking at my health department. I see that over time, what do we have for health programs? Okay, there's me health medical, there's mental health, uh, there is personal care, that's kind of a health thing, and there is wellness. Well, we don't have that much in any of those. I'm gonna make all of those into the code wellness. Now what I'm, what, excuse me, what I'm gonna do here is combine all of these. So what I'll do, I'll highlight health, I'm gonna highlight control click mental health. I'm gonna control click personal care. And so I'm selecting multiple values of this. And then the last one I'm going to select is wellness. Now, as I'm doing that, what this represents is the last value I picked. And the point is, I can now take all four, three, four, five, 20 of these codes that I've highlighted and combine them all under the wellness code or make a new code called health and wellness. Uh, this is interest code, so I got 10 digits I could play with. But we're just going to replace that. I'm not gonna change your status. And I'm gonna hit the word replace and it's all done and now Health is gone, mental health is gone, yada yada is gone, and um, it is now all combined, all of those have been combined under wellness. Now, did those original codes retain any history in the system now that I've done this? Raise your hand if you think they did. I'm watching, I'm watching. All right, nobody bit. They did not because I did what basically was an edit where I combined the two codes, those four codes into one code and the other three codes uh, have disappeared and have been replaced by wellness. So again, if, if you're okay with that, then this is a, a, well, a way to do it. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, you need to be a little bit careful on that. Uh, cleaning up codes. This is a, a select a code you want to clean up, uh, combine codes. That's what we've done here. Uh, the other area, locations, course names, and fees. Again, um, technically a location is a code that you assign to a course. 
So again, uh, there is a tool to combine locations. If you've got three or four different spellings for um, A-square, A-C-W-A-R-E, A-C-W-E-A-R, A-square international headquarters, which is the same as our national headquarters, you could combine those uh, codes and it will update the records in, in the database. Uh, firms, now this is one again that I think a lot of you, if you're using company names, are horribly, horribly bad at doing, and that is trying to clean up and consolidate firm names so you don't have a bunch of different ones of the same kind. And again, this is very similar to uh, the way you do it with we, the way we did our interest codes on wellness. So we're going to go to tools well, uh, and data cleanup, firms, and we're going to look for ACE. And we're going to, whoops, I think we're going to do that. Well, I'm going to search for some keywords ACE or ACE where and refresh. So here we have ACE Hardware, ACE Systems Dyer Road, that was a typo, ACE Where Systems, Ericsson, that was the same co company and that was the corporate address 30 years ago, ACE Where Systems Inc. and ACE Where Systems Plane. Well, they're all the same thing. So what we're gonna do is click on all, all four of these, but I'm gonna do it with the last record that I wanna keep is the one I'm gonna click on last. So I'm gonna first click ACEWARE Systems, control click on this one, control click on this one, and you'll see the last record I clicked on is the values that go into the replace area. So the last thing I wanna do is replace with ACEWARE Systems, World Headquarters, Dyer Road, da da da. This would be for the second line of the address. I'm say I want to combine all of these firms into one, replace, bada boom, and we should be in there. Now it's updating the records, and shazam, I now have one uh, record for Aceware. Any and all firms, any all names that were tied to that will be uh, dropped into this, this one mother firm now. It's a mother of all firms, so, all right. Okay, cleaning up codes. AceWeb, and again, this is something again uh, on AceWeb and particularly the interest codes and the source codes. So the idea is that in Student Manager, you might have several dozen interest codes because you have little nuances of, of different kinds. But for AceWeb, you typically want to try to reduce the amount of angst that you put your students through and uh, which one of all of these codes is really the one I used or that I'm interested in. Well, maybe we need fine grain marketing in an area and you can do that, but if others are more general, I would aim at trying to keep your ACE web interest code areas fairly general. Uh, so the way you can do that is on the interest code area, you've got do not display interest code on AceWeb. And again, if this was more of an internal note that you wanted to track uh, for names that provide some special service, but it's not something you really want to put on the web, just mark don't display on AceWeb. Uh, ditto with source codes. Uh, how did you learn about us? If you've got, again, uh, if billboard is not something you're going to worry about for web tracking, which is kind of an interesting juxtaposition, uh, then uncheck that particular item, and it will not show up in the um, in the AceWeb How I Learned About This Course code. Again, our final set of course tips in this is use as many as you want, only use as many as you'll use, use enough characters to achieve clarity. Again, right now, interest code has a full 10 digits. So you really don't, there's no honest advantage to having a two-digit cryptic interest code when you can really use all, all 10 digits. Um, and especially for interest codes, I think this idea of a major minor system is something that really can be useful if you're trying to fine tune your marketing and promotions 
is that you have a five plus five, you know, the first five is the general area, uh, EDU, C for education, uh, M, A, N, A, D, D, E, G for management, and then you can add on your supplemental areas, M, A, G, M, A, N, A, G, hyphen, uh, A, C for accounting, hyphen, S, U for supervision, hyphen, what's the other one, M, K for marketing, so you can have uh, management, but then all of the permutations of the ways of uh, breaking that out that you might want. So, code tips. Uh, again, if you have to backload a bunch of codes, you need to put a code on a series of records that are already in the system. Uh, well, you can use a stamp function in the report functions. Um, and again, what what these allow you to do is to create a, or take a report, add this function on in a just after, and what it and and you pass and when you when you modify that report, you'll have the option to type in a code that this report would do would would act on, and it would then basically uh, you you'd run a query for the records that you want coded and the report at the conclusion would ask do you want me to add the value blah blah to the code field blah blah a for all of these records yes or no and bada boom it does that consider it as a massive find and replace option so again you can stamp a grouping code backload a grouping code to courses you can backload an interest code to grunches of names uh, and again, you can actually stamp individual code values um, into different data fields. So, combining versus inactivating, again, uh, it, it, like I did on those four health codes, when you combining codes, all of those other health codes, health, well, health, uh, mental health, personal care, those three codes are no longer around. They have all been replaced by wellness. Uh, so the, there's no way to tell which names had those original codes on them. And again, the activating codes removes it from the code list. And as we said, if you want to keep an old code value around, uh, don't combine it or don't delete it, just deactivate it instead. Finally, a couple other little tips uh, like dates on certain codes, the date on interest code, uh, the date on the membership code. If you right mouse click on the code itself, uh, you bring up a little edit window to be able to edit the date that is assigned to those particular codes. All right, we are into questions. And Sharon, I told you 45 minutes. So what do you got for questions? Otherwise, I've got a couple of examples I promised you that Name interest code scoping, which is uh, we haven't covered yet, but what do we got? Anything to answer from the crew? Go ahead and give those examples, Chuck. They might need to think a little bit more. All right, all right. So let's go back to manager. Here's the circumstance. Uh, so if if I'm a program or I'm a I'm a coordinator and my job is the Acewear courses. And so when I'm adding students, pretty much the only students I deal with are the ones that are enrolling in ACEWARE courses or interested in ACEWARE programs. So when I click on an interest code, right now I'm seeing everything, soup, nuts, blah, blah, blah. This all has to do with every single interest code in the database. <clears throat> so what I can do is go to my preferences area, edit preferences, names, and say, I want to only deal with, well, I said ACEWARE, computer programs, I'm, I, I, which includes ACEWARE. My job is only going to involve, uh, I only deal with people interested in computer courses for interest codes. So I go in and set my preferences for the category of, of uh, <clears throat> computer codes. And now when I pull up a name record, and I click on the interest code, I only see the three specific interest codes that have to do with computers. 
And you'll note down here, scope by, it says C, because I said, I only want to see that. I only want to see the, the, the computer people. Now, if, if my buddy Fred, who deals with kids programs, it's, it's April and we're registering kids camps. He said, Chuck, Chuck, can you help me with interest with, with my uh, kids camps? Oh, sure, I will. And I'm at a kid here and I need to be able to add something related to the kids programs. I can change that scope right now and just say all programs and now I'm back to seeing every single interest code. I can pick one. Uh, I'm gonna get a uh, kid pro whatever, get that one, add it. And the next time I go back in, I'm gonna still be a uh, scope to this and I could change that. So that is how, now let's see, where do you set those codes on the interest code? Well, let's go to our code area, interest codes, name, interest codes. So again, this is where you can assign to an interest code, which category does this fall in? A, B, C, L, or H? We don't have the ability to show the detail, but the scoping part is right here, interest code scoping. This is where you can define a code that ties to a particular category. Again, you define the, the, the program area. It could be children's programs, it could be workforce programs, it could be uh, adult, um, what, base ABE programs. And then you set up the codes, and then at the interest code level, you assign that code to the interest code, and then you can, um, Again, at the individual staff member level, you can set a default interest code, or even as I did with the example of Fred helping me helping Fred out, um, I can go in when I'm selecting interest codes, just click on my preference here and be able to quickly scope uh, specific interest codes uh, with this tool as as we're as we're moving along with that so that is your scoping and I think that's a kind of a unique area of interest code Matthew what other things about codes do you think if if you're still paying attention or Sharon you think that we might want to we might want to hit here so I think you've pretty well covered it very good very good so well good. I um, think folks may have questions as they go in and start cleaning up those codes. Right, I should right. I should mention, too, before this session started, you saw that we have a service called Enterprise Consulting. And so if you decide you're just too overwhelmed to take that on, ACEWARE can certainly help re look at your data and versus suggestions and things. So you can get with me about that. Uh, Chuck has here our next webinar. It's a coffee and conversation. This is new for us this year when we got together for our planning retreat. We reviewed the 21 user survey and found out that a lot of you are interested in a less formal get together. Just get together and chat, bringing your questions or your comments or your concerns and talking as a group or talking with ACEWARE. So we're going to give that a shot this year. We'll see what registrations we get this time in March on the 16th. This will just be kind of an open forum where you bring your questions, but we may add some themes to registrars or different, different program types to get together and chat. So we're excited. We'll open up the microphones and just have a sit down discussion with you all in March. And we're looking forward to that. How about you, Chuck? Uh, yes, that'll be fun. Uh, it's always been a fun time to do that. So, uh, uh, we'll definitely uh, look forward to basically just a conversation and it, you can throw, tell us what's on your mind, um, uh, wishes, hopes, dreams, questions, challenges, and uh, we'll see if, if we can help you figure out a way to make ACEWARE do it or make ACEWARE do it better. So because, Yeah, it's going to be a win-win. We'll get ideas. You'll get new tips and best practices. You'll get to visit with colleagues. I just think it's going to be a great time. So that's coming up in March. So Very Chuck, good. nobody minds a shorter meeting. Everybody's going to look forward to having a little time. They're going to start cleaning up. They're looking at their codes right away, I'm sure. But Sounds thanks for good. joining us, everyone. Chuck, Matthew, thanks for your help as well. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye.